Hey friends, welcome to the 10th tutorial of biology section from AIPMT 2009 question paper. And I do hope that the burning desire that you had of wearing that white coat along with that stethoscope is still alive in you. So here we will be practicing question number 97 to 100 along with question number 11 to 15 which I had left due to some technical error in tutorial second of this course. So we will start with question number 97. So here is question number 97 in front of you which reads the genetic defect adenosine deaminase that is the ADA deficiency may be cured permanently by which of the following. So friends the right answer for this question is option number 4. The ADA deficiency can be totally cured by the by introducing bone marrow cells producing ADA into cells at early embryonic stages which is also called as the bone marrow transplantation and if you remember this para from NCRT it's a very important para the ADA deficiency was described uh, in a four year old girl in which in whom the first clinical gene therapy was also performed and this disease is caused actually due to the deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase enzyme and in some children if you see this ADA deficiency can be cured by bone marrow but some also go under enzyme replacement therapy to cure it. Even gene therapy is discovered for it but it is not that effective. So I hope this point is clear to you and remember this point is very important. So please once go through it in NCRT. Now we will be moving on to the next question that is question number 98. So basically this question is there is no DNA in which of the following cell. I hope you answer this question. Even though I know that your answer is right still I would answer it. The right answer is option number 3 that is in mature RBCs there is no DNA. Actually RBCs when they mature, they lack the nucleus uh, so that they can store more amount of hemoglobin inside them. So in this process, when the nucleus is lost, the DNA too is lost. That's why the right answer is option number 3 that is mature RBC. Whereas in hair root cells, nucleus is there and hence the DNA is also there. In enucleated ovum or a mature spermatozoan, the DNA is present. Now we will be moving. Oh sorry. Actually the enucleated ovum means an ovum from which the nucleus is removed. Actually in ovum this the enucleation is done artificially. So it can't be considered as an answer. Whereas the mature RBCs they lack DNA on their own naturally. And hence the answer is option number 3. So please do not confuse between option number 2 and option number 3. Now we will be moving on to the next question that is question number 99. The letter T in T lymphocyte refers to which of the following? A very easy question. So the right answer is option number 1 that is T represents thymus. Basically friends there are two types of lymphocytes if you remember one is T lymphocyte and the other is B lymphocyte. The T lymphocyte is produced and mature in thymus and that's why it's named as T lymphocytes whereas the B lymphocytes they produce and mature in the bone marrow and hence they are called as the B lymphocyte. Now I hope this point is clear to you. The next question is question number 100 which is Tiger is not a resident in which one of the following national park? So the right answer is option number 4. In Gir National Park, even though there are so many lions, there is not even a single tiger found. Now the next question, question number 11. The stroma in the chloroplast of higher plant contains which of the following? So friends, the right answer is option number 2. The stroma in the chloroplast contains the light independent reaction enzymes. Here you can see the grana which uh, 
this round round structures they are called as the grana and they contain the light dependent reaction enzymes whereas the stroma part of the chloroplast contains light independent reaction enzymes now the next question that is question number 12 synapsis occurs between which of the following synapsis is actually it is a pairing of two homologous chromosomes so the right answer goes number 1 here you see these are two homologous chromosomes okay if you are wondering what are homologous chromosomes then let me explain you the homologous chromosomes are two chromosomes which has got the same dna sequence like if one chromosome is taken from the maternal part uh, maternal and this the other chromosome is taken from the uh, paternal side these two chromosomes will be called homologous chromosomes because the dna sequence in both of them is exactly same and when these chromosomes they pair up they form a structure which is called as synapsis where the exchange of chromosome takes place now we are moving on to the next question that is question number 13 middle lamella is composed mainly of which of the following So friends the right answer is option number 4 that is calcium pectate this middle lamella is formed mainly of calcium and magnesium pectate and sometimes pectin too this middle lamella what its function is it basically acts as cement material between the two cells as here you can see this is the middle lamella and this is cementing two cells suppose these two cells are bricks then middle lamella is the cement which joins the two cells and sometimes is it allows movement of several substances too so i hope this point is clear to you now we will be moving on to the next question that is cytoskeleton is made up of which of the following so the right answer is option number 1 the cytoskeleton is made up of the proteinaceous filaments and basically the function of cytoskeleton is to provide support to the cell so these proteinaceous filaments they are spread in the protoplasm of the cell and they provide support to the cell and keeps its shape intact now the next question is question number 15 which is the cell junctions called tight adhering and gap junctions are found in which of the following tissue So guys the right answer is option number 4 These types of cell junctions are found basically in the epithelial tissue So these junctions are basically of three types that is the tight junction as here you can see the two cell walls are bound uh, sorry the cell membranes are bound to each other tightly and in this no exchange of any material takes place and in the second type which is the adherence junction a few substances can pass from uh, through each other whereas in the gap junction the substance transportation is free and any substance can pass from one cell to the next cell so i hope this point is clear to you this is where the tutorial ends and you won't believe you have solved 100 questions in tutorial second uh, sorry in second course and 100 questions in first course so just imagine how these 200 questions are going to help you and again we will be solving even more questions in the upcoming courses so get ready for that and keep studying keep practicing mcqs don't waste your time keep working hard to achieve your goal so here the tutorial ends i hope you liked it you can give me your feedback and suggestions in the comment sections you can give your ratings if you like the tutorials and the courses which are made by me you can follow me at my unacademy profile thank you so much guys for your support and love so this is the time to leave bye